So, in the interest of time, I'll go straight away to address the issues that we thought that were important for us to have a say. Number one, the nation is aware that uh, only a few days ago, the opposition led by the Patriotic Front came up with what they are calling United Kwacha Alliance. The opposition came up with what they are calling United Kwacha Alliance, which is an alliance, as we have been told as citizens, that is meant to amalgamate the opposition together to face the UPND alliance in the 2026 20, general elections. We would like to place on record as government that we welcome the formation of the United Kwacha Alliance. This is a living testament that the democratic space in this country, Zambia, is ever widening. The creation of this United Quacha Alliance is an indictment that the citizens of this country are fully enjoying their freedoms, particularly the freedom and right to freedom of association. We therefore want to take this opportunity to indicate that government will not stand on the way of the United Quacha Alliance in its formation and registration processes. For as long as they meet the legal requirements of the land, we as government have no interest whatsoever to halt the progress of the U UKA in their tracks. So they can go ahead to register their party and the party in government has no interest whatsoever other than appreciating that the democratic <clears throat> space in this country is widening. We are also happy to note that this particular political party alliance comes in at a time when the same people who are forming this party have been alleging shrinking democratic space in this country. And quite contrary, their own actions have shown that the democratic space in this country is expanding because actions speak louder than words. We we'll recall that from 2016 to 2021, it is very difficult to recall any political party ever registering itself, there was none. Because of the hostile political environment that was so toxic that citizens would not conceive an idea of forming a political party. Barely two years of the new Don administration in office, political parties are at liberty citizens are at liberty to form themselves into organizations such as the United Quacha Alliance. We want therefore to urge all the members of the United Quacha Alliance to be ambassadors of goodwill to the peace that is reigning supreme in this country and also to be ambassadors of goodwill to tell the nation and the international community 
that the democratic space in Zambia is ever expanding as evidenced by them weekly holding press briefings, going to various media houses to speak their mind, share their opinions, and also to assemble themselves in the manner that they have now done as a political alliance. We want to state that we are happy with their coming together. Maybe now they can begin to consolidate some ideas which they can use as a measure for checks and balances to government. The way they have been this far, we have had a situation where literally there has been no real and reasonable opposition in this country. So it is only fair that they came together because as individual political parties they were not a formidable force whatsoever because after all those political parties the majority of them are made out of individuals without a following the united Quacha alliance comprises the patriotic front and individual members calling themselves presidents of political parties. Outside the patriotic front in that alliance, all the other political parties do not have even a single councillor countrywide. Zero. So how can they call themselves political party presidents coming together as an alliance? This is an alliance of patriotic front plus individuals who many of them in the general elections of 2021 performed dismally to drive the point home. If you remove former president Edgar Lungu here and you put the rest of the political party presidents, put them together, all those who stood in 2021, add their votes together. Me here, as member of parliament for Choma Central constituents, I got more votes than all of them put together. So I'm a bigger alliance myself than all those outside patriotic front. So the point I'm trying to drive home is that other than patriotic front, the rest have no mandate from the electorates whatsoever. They are on their own. Now, here is what I'm putting to the public and placing on record. That whereas we do commend the United Quacha Alliance in information for coming together, we actually note that the real thing behind the United Quacha Alliance is that finally, Patriotic Front has managed to rebrand itself. The so-called United Quacha Alliance is not an alliance, it is rebranded PF. So, United Quacha Alliance, in real terms, it is PF United Quacha Alliance. That is PF trying to hide behind a curtain. Because they have realized that Patriotic Front as a brand name is tainted with political violence, is tainted with divisive and hate speech, is tainted with tribal talk, it is tainted with corruption, it is tainted with maladministration, it is simply a non sellable brand. They therefore had to come up with a way 
of disguising themselves as though they were not the ones by calling individuals who have no following and said we are now forming an alliance a number of those people when you look at them you can clearly see that they are just being used by PF they are being used as political doormats for the patriotic front for it to dust itself of its tainted history so they should not cheat anyone that there is a new political force in Zambia. There is none. It is the same old wine in the same old bottles. Nothing will change in the trajectory of the politics of this country by the formation of this so-called alliance. We want to call on them, particularly our colleagues in the former ruling party, to come out in the open and say this is PF rebranded. They will have more decency that way. In the like manner that when we went to the elections of 2021, we knew who the major player was. We said it's UPND. Then other political parties joined what was then called and now is still called UPND Alliance. So this United Culture Alliance is a PF Alliance. That is it. We also note, interestingly, and the citizens noted yesterday, that this grouping of individuals now called an alliance yesterday shielded the former president from exposing his lack of vision for this country by telling the media to say today all questions should be addressed to the one who is a addressing, not, not to others, because they knew that the media are interested in the former president because he is a man of consequence. He is a leader of this country. He is tested as a leader, and he has failed the test. So they say, no, don't ask questions to others, just ask the one who is addressing you, because they know that last time he engaged the media, he fumbled big time. When you, the media, asked him, under the circumstances of the issues you are complaining about, given that these issues of debt restructuring, you were the ones who contracted this colossal debt, what would you have done if you are in office? He said, no, I'm not in state house. Ask HH. Now, what type of opposition would that be which does not offer alternative policy programs for the citizens? And we are well aware that after that briefing, his colleagues roasted him. Say, how could you answer like that? So yesterday they had to shield him. No, don't ask any other. Ask the, the officiant. We are also aware that whereas Mr. Sakuba Skota may be fronted as a chairperson or interim chairperson for that alliance, the president or presidential candidate for that alliance going into 2026 20, elections has already been chosen. It is former president Ediga Chagwa Lungu. That is already settled. Because he's a man behind that idea. He's a major funder. So let them come out in the open to interact with the citizens on these issues. But the main point is the alleged shrinking democratic space yesterday. Among us, the two things I want to address this morning. 
And I think now the nation knows that the opposition has run out of ideas. The opposition cannot engage this government on policy issues. They have no issues with policy of government. That is why they are dealing with politics. So this call or claim and assertion that there is shrinking democratic space in Zambia should now come to an end. We are calling on the opposition to bring down this curtain of jokes. We have a country to lead and we do not intend that we should be paying attention all the time to side shows. Let them engage government on policy and let them provide alternative policy issues to what government is presently doing. We want to reiterate that decency dictates that this opposition led by the patriotic front, if it had any modicum of decency, is supposed to shut up over debt restructuring. Because they are the cause why we are here. And all the surrogates who are saying stop referring to the patriotic front because they are out. We are here to say we shall not refer to them anymore. If only we are not confronted with the consequences of the bad decisions they made while they were in office. We shall continue. There should not be anything special about the previous administration. Dear colleagues, you, you remember last time I told you that when I was in grade four, there was a question, what made Zambia's economy to slam in the mid-70s? I found that question in first year at university, same question. And the answer was political interference among us, the, the answers. So what makes PF a special group of people that they cannot be mentioned after all the mess they left the country in? Today we are faced with a difficult situation where when you promise to recruit 3,500 teachers and recruit 7,500, there is an outcry of many that remain unrecruited and employed. And what is the problem? The problem is not this recruitment process or how it is going about. The problem is because for many years, government institutions and private institutions have been channeling out graduates into the industry without commensurate job opportunities being created by government and industry. You now have a government that has embarked on a very robust manner to try and ensure that many young people are employed in government within the resource envelope to be able to put them on the payroll. Then you have this opposition which has nothing to do. Every day calling press conferences. Calling press conferences. We are calling on them. Right now there is a by-election in Mansabombo. Let's go and meet in Mansabombo and not press conferences here in Lusaka. So that we see what people on the ground think. We want to appeal to the citizens of this country not to be swayed by this opposition which has run out of ideas. Every day, politics, politics, politics. We are calling on the opposition to give President HH space to address his mind to dealing with the economic challenges of the country. And that is why I'm here. I know that there could be people there, out there, who are saying, you are always responding to the opposition. That's my job, so that President HH can do his job as well. But he gets detracted by needless controversy and confrontation by the opposition. 
we urge them not to take for granted the peace that he has granted and guaranteed as by law established. Yesterday, the opposition spoke about the Barosseland issue. And maybe that is the main reason why we called you colleagues today. That ever since this issue of Balosserand came on board and took center stage of national debate in this country, as government, we have not pronounced ourselves. And in lieu of that, speculation has crept in and all manner of assertions are being promulgated. Let me, on the behalf of government now, place on record that the government Republic of Zambia of the new Don administration is fully conscious of the Barosseland issue and pertaining to and in respect with the current debate over the Barosseland issue, the new Don administration has opted for quiet diplomacy, given that government attaches great importance and respect to traditional leadership. The government believes that when there is an issue of national importance, you cannot resolve such a matter through press conferences or through media engagements. And so the nation should be informed that their government has elected quiet diplomacy looking for a win-win situation. There is no chaos in this country. There is no anarchy in this country. There is no division in this country arising out of the Barosseland issue. The proponents that there is division in this country arising out of the Barosseland issue are proponents of despondency. There is peace throughout this country. And a region called Barosseland is living harmoniously with the rest of the regions of the country called Zambia. So, we call upon the opposition not to be this opportunistic even to the extent and at the expense of national unity and peace for the country. There should be no requirement that we as a country should begin to make a distress call to the African Union and or to the UN over the Barosseland issue. Because the Barosseland issue or question is a national question which is within the purview of the citizens of this country to be able to resolve. We have not reached a stage where this particular issue has brought discord in the country. We have not reached a stage where this particular issue has brought anarchy in the country. We have not yet reached a stage where this particular issue has brought division in the country. We are not there. I would like to reiterate here the position of government that Zambia, in accordance with 
the constitution of the Republic of Zambia remains a unitary state as by law presently subsisting or in force. The constitution of the Republic of Zambia in terms of Article 1 provides that this constitution is the supreme law of the Republic of Zambia and any written law, customary law, and customary practice that is inconsistent with its provisions is void to the extent of the inconsistency. In Article 1.3, the Constitution provides that this Constitution shall bind all persons in Zambia, state organs, and state institutions. It further states that the people of Zambia resolve that Zambia shall remain a unitary, multi-party, and democratic sovereign state. This is the constitution. So when President H.H. H. says there is no country called Barossaland, he does not mean there is no Barossaland. Barossaland is there. It was there before independence. It is here after independence. It shall continue to exist as Barossaland, a region in Zambia. We are wondering why even this should bring consternation to the country. Because Barossaland existed as a British protectorate before independence, just like Northern Rhodesia existed as a British protectorate before independence. None of the two states were countries. As far as information within my possession is concerned. But these two regions amalgamated to form a country called Zambia. So if those who belonged to North, Northern Rhodesia are told that there is no country called Northern Rhodesia, why should politicians begin to run circles around? You know, how can you say there is no Northern Rhodesia? Don't you know that we made an agreement to form Zambia? The question is, was there a country called Northern Rhodesia? The answer is no. So if someone says there was no Northern, there is no country called Northern Rhodesia in Zambia, why should that be an issue of debate? Simple. And I would like here to reaffirm the position of government that President H.H. H. sought to defend the constitution of the Republic of Zambia. And for as long as he is president, superintending over the affairs of this country under the current constitution, he shall be mandated and obligated by law to defend the unitary state of a country called Zambia. That's the position of government. There should be no debate. This has nothing to do with disrespecting the BRI. Far from it. After all, President HH is a son to the Dutunga. So how can he disown his own father? For those who want to make political mileage out of this. How can President H.H. H. disown the Ritunga, his own father? But the law is clear. In Zambia, there is only one country. 
made out of 10 provinces as by law established. Now it, it must be understood here very clearly that the constitution is what binds us together. All of us have surrendered our individual sovereignty into this calabash called the constitution to ensure that only that which as a community of people agree on will take precedence be before our individual preferences. So the president sought to defend the constitution. But the constitution in itself is a creature of the citizens of this country. And it is not cast in stone, meaning it can be amended, it can be repealed, and if at a particular time citizens will decide that we want to make this country divisible, because it is currently unitary and indivisible, we want to make it divisible. Those who belong to Northern Rhodesia at the time of independence want their own territory. They will choose a name for it. Maybe they will say Northern Rhodesia country. It is in the hands of the citizens of this country, not in the hands of President HH or New Dawn administration, no. That is why the Constitution says we the people, through those represented, representing us in Parliament, have given to ourselves this law. So if some people think that they want a territory of themselves, Southern province wants a territory, or Eastern province wants a territory, that is why Parliament is there, to amend the law. Let us stop ostracizing an innocent president like HH. He has done a lot for this country to pull us from where we were. Negative 2% GDP growth rate. A country in international shame of failure to pay its local and international debt obligations. Restoration of the rule of law and peace in the country. Bringing back a reputation of a country back to become a beacon of peace in the region and now globally again. We must appreciate because these gains that Zambia is making are not for President HH, they are for us citizens. So let us not give space to political opportunists who want to malign President HH because they had said he will never be president. And now he is president, courtesy of the people of Zambia. You can read through them, you can pen them down one by one. Sakuba Scott. He has a bone to chew with President HH because he stood to become president of the UPND and lost through a democratic ballot at Morongosh. And I was his campaign liars on person. I was not in the HH camp myself. I was in Sakuba's camp. I was his spokesperson for the campaign. And we lost together. <laughs> Facts must be stated. We lost. After we lost, in the night we met and said, no, we have lost. What do we do? Say, no. So others, some people say, no, let's form a, a political party. Some even had already had names. They said, no, even the name is already here. It's UAOP. So me, I was like, so these people knew that we were losing. Why were they making me campaign when they knew we were losing? These are facts. That is 2006. We lost. So, me I asked only one question. Now, if you are saying we form United Liberal Party to oppose 
because HH has won. What if our camp had won and HH had lost? and he is now sitting with his people in the night, the way we are under the cover of darkness, and say, let's form another grouping. How would we have taken that? Because the idea of going into this competition was that whoever wins, the loser should support. That is how some of us left that losing camp. This is the fact. I'm part of that losing camp to HH. But I'm a Democrat. I accept it. The people's verdict. These are facts. Some of you have been in politics, covering politics for a while. You know what I'm saying is the truth. So, Sakwiba has a bone to chew with HH and therefore cannot be relied upon as a measure of good judgment against HH. He is patently and manifestly biased. Because I can see a number of journalists, some of you are young. In that whole transaction, in our camp there was a quiver scotter, party spokesperson there was given Rubinda, deputy spokesperson there was myself. So, me and given Rubinda, we won. But after our, our candidate lost, given Rubinda also defected with the losing candidate. These are facts. So, when you listen to Sakura Skota, when you listen to Given Rubinda, these are people who are bitter to the bone about HH. So never expect anything good from them about how they will judge HH's performance. Edith Inawaki. After HH became president of UPND in 2006, we went into what was called United Democratic Alliance, UDA, in 2006. Because UPND then had just lost its founding president. And in that alliance, clearly the dominant force was UPND. Because UPND had 42 members of parliament. And FDD, I think he had, if not one, had one MP. But then Edith Nawaki, Edith Zewerani Nawaki, <laughs> said, I will be the leader. He said, what matrix are we using here? And through a democratic ballot again, HH won the presidency, the, the candidate, candidacy of UDA. And from the day HH was announced to be the candidate for United Democratic Alliance, Edith Zewerani Nawaki went under in hiding for three months until the day election results were announced. And on that date, Mr. Michael Sata was the one leading before all other constituencies were finalized. She surfaced, quickly called a briefing to congratulate Mr. Michael said, I would like to congratulate my, my brother, he has won. Later on it was discovered that actually it's President Manasa who had won. So you can never rely on Edith Zewerani Nawaki. She has nothing good to say about President HH. In fact, as a person herself, she is bad-hearted. <laughs> Some of you recall that I told you the case of Lusaka City Council versus Edith Zewerani Nawakwi where she hounded out a widow and threw her out with children sleeping outside the house. Today she can say she, she has a good heart to lead Zambia. When did she change from that bad heart that she can lead a country? Edith now ask her if she did not cause Puma Filling station, 
Charleston closed and unleashed ZRA as Minister of Finance on account of a lady who was running that filling station on personal issues. Ask her. Today, Edith Nawaki can talk about maize. GMO maize. The government is so maize. She holds the record of the most unscrupulous and most scandalous maize gate scandal in this country called the Carrington scandal. Ask her. She has no morality to talk the way she wants to talk. She doesn't have. She is just conspected with bitterness against HH. And some of us are getting fed up with that kind of malignant bitterness. What has HH done? Is it a crime for him to be president of his own country? The rest, they are still in the political kindergarten. Hari Karaba. Okay, Hari Karaba resigned on moral grounds, saying that Edgar Chagwarungu and his administration were corrupt. So I give him a mark for that. But you know the way he's behaving. It's like you run 10 steps forward, then you run 40 going backwards. What progress can you make? You know, to, we have decided to put our artificial differences. Artificial differences. So you have been mocking citizens. We want politics of decency, politics of principle. She's just acting. Have you ever look, look at this drama? She's acting president of NDC. The president of NDC has left NDC to join PF as an individual. We are expected by now, Mr. Lungu, to see through these political schemes. And I can now begin to disclose that we worked well with Mr. Chimbakambui to bring down Edgar Lungu. That's the reason why he didn't go with his party into PF. He, he left it, said, no, remain here. Me, I'll just go and be issuing tribal remarks so that the person I'm representing will be hated by the citizens. And that's what happened. Oh, by the way, we wish Mr. Shimbakambiri a very swift and expeditious quick recovery. <laughs> we may differ on politics, but at the end of the day, we are all citizens. You know life, you only live it once. And as citizens of this great country, Zambia, we are known to love one another. So wish him well. The government Republic of Zambia has lawfully evacuated him to South Africa so that he can be attended to specialized medical treatment. Unlike what he had done to run away to go and hide in Zimbabwe. He had to be brought back. And to show that President HH and his administration mean well, he was brought back and said, now you go now roughly so that you can recover quickly. Other than looking over your shoulders, who is coming here, maybe I'm being followed. Do you know why? He's a citizen. Zambia is a peaceful country. And I hope all those who were saying that uh, 
Mr. Shimbakambuli was being blackmailed, have been put to shame. And they will continue to meet such instances. Because President HH means business. To serve this country fairly and well. Let me end by responding to Mr. Fred Membe. Firstly, I acknowledge the step that Mr. Fred Membe, just like Mr. Winter Kabimba, took to reject joining this oppositional alliance because as they stated it was not a creature of the citizens but one of and by individual persons now Mr. Fred Membe has told this nation that uh, if given an opportunity to become president to which we do not object because that is the reserve and the preserve and the province and the jurisdiction of the citizens to decide. He has said he would want traditional leaders, their royal highnesses, to become DCs. And that the most senior the most senior chief in a province will become a provincial minister. Now, you can already see that Mr. Fred Membe is directionless. He has no clue whatsoever. This is someone just with an insatiable appetite to become president. Without any clear agenda, whatsoever. That is why he has been so, so ruthless through his newspapers, attacking the integrity of whoever he perceived to be a competitor at the time he would want to run for president. Article 168.2 of the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia preclude traditional leaders from becoming office bearers of elected offices such as MP and therefore minister. Because if you are going to be a provincial minister, you must be an MP whether elected or nominated. So Mr. Fred Membe is already beginning to propose to breach and violate the constitution even before he can be considered for election. And further, and of what we deem most important, if Mr. Fred Membe is proposing that uh, the most senior chief in a province will become the provincial minister, we ask him, who is going to be the provincial minister for Southern Province? Which chief? Who is going to become the provincial minister for Eastern Province? Which chief? Who is going to become the provincial minister for Northwestern Province? Which chief? Clearly. Mr. Membe did not think through his assertions. And I must indicate that for once, he held a press briefing that was below par. At least for a man of his stature and of what I know him to be. Because huh? he's my friend, he was my desk mate at law school. I ex the citizens expected more. He, his performance that day was dismal and shambolic. <laughs> <laughs>
the nation should expect a lot better from those who are positioning themselves that they would want to lead this country. We take his position that he wants to make their royal highnesses as a disease to be an affront to the integrity of the royal seat that they occupy. Further, we do not think that it is right that uh, traditional leaders, chiefs, should occupy a position whereof citizens are at liberty to pay out any comments at. Because those are respected positions. They are not like these positions we have. Me, you can call me any names. Even now on social media, those who are streaming, people are calling me all sorts of names. I don't care. I'm just doing what is right. But do you, do you phantom to think about a traditional leader being called all sorts of names? We think that that position of traditional leader, a chief, should be preserved. It should continue to be part of our cherished heritage and culture going forward generation after generation. I thank you so much for your kind audience.